don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon so you don't miss future episodes. In our last episode, we left Faux Lagoon to head north towards Vavau. Our departure had to be done in good light to avoid the reef. Our arrival into Vavau also had to be done in good light, so the plan was to drop anchor in Ha'ano Island and set sail around midnight. However, the wind had other plans. You can see that in the back of the That's our anchorage for tonight. It's a bit ordinary, isn't it, babe? Yeah. We are heading to Vavau. We were due to leave at midnight. And uh, it's uh, so rolly in here, we're actually going to leave early. Standard procedure for departing a rolly anchorage at night. Life vest, PFD, and uh, torch, warm coat, and a sense of humour. Well, it is quarter past one in the morning. Having a lovely sail so far. Just got the head sail out and averaging about four knots which we are wanting to do so that we can get into the bottom of uh, Vavau at daylight basically. We've got one reef in and just having a chill. So the sun is up and we've hoisted the main. We're on off of the main. Still got one reef in. What are we doing somewhere between Five and a half and seven months. Okay. Basically, gonna come to us here, and we're coming around into this mass of yachts here to see if we can pick up a mooring. Looks jolly busy. Channel markers, nearly in. Ni a fu. We've both had coffee, can you tell? We are in Vavau and we are in Niafu. Niafu Harbour. Is it called Niafu Harbour? Yes, and okay. we're going to go to the dinghy dock. Make sure, well, we're going to see if our outboard works first, yeah. otherwise we're boring. boring. Um, and uh, yeah, we're going to go and do a domestic check-in. Well, the outboard motor started, but it wasn't happy, so it was obvious that we needed to find someone to fix it. However, first things first, we needed to do our domestic check-in. The customs guy appeared a little subdued, but after a chat, he confessed to being just a little bit dusty after a big night on the carver. And what's the big news of the day? Who have we found? Uh, Ian. What's Ian going to do? Ian is running a company called Trouble in Paradise, and he is going to look at our outboard tomorrow and rebuild the carby properly after Richard and I haven't been able to. And he seems a jolly nice chap. He does. This is the lovely Ian. And Ian, what have you just done to our, our outboard, Ian? He made it purr. He made it purr like a baby. <laughs> what was the issue? Uh, water in the fuel, dirt in the jets, neglect, abandonment. Yeah. You know, all just, those things. So that was it, it wasn't a loved puppy. It was all my fault. It was <laughs> lack of love. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong oil, lack of love, <laughs> all of the above. So, so if you're in Tonga, this is the man. Well, if you actually, if you're in Vavaro, because it's quite yeah. a long way to come from Tonga to Ethel, really, <laughs> yeah, isn't it? <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, Thank anyway, Ian. That's you. awesome. Thank you. Saturday grocery run. Get a few bits and then hopefully we can get the flock out of here today. Oh, that's the important thing then, is it? Sticky. Rob's got his beer, got so that's beers. the shopping done now. So, not a bad haul from the shops then this morning. We've got enough pumpkin and sweet potato to last us for an eternity. Tomatoes, papaya, cucumbers, got some free bananas. Not forgetting the 24 beers that we carried back as well. How true. Yeah. So. That should keep us going for a week or so. Yeah, maybe look at the maps now and see if we can up anchor and move on, eh? Yeah.
made it into vaca ichu earlier today. Bit of a pain in the ass. The uh, bottom's not great. It took us three goes to actually get the anchor to hold. That's a pretty nice spot. It's going to be a beautiful sunset by the look of things. Can't really complain. So this is not good. This is what's come up on our anchor. If you can see that, that is a massive coral head on the anchor. I don't know how we're going to get it off, but we're going to have to try. Well, that was a first. <laughs> We just lifted the biggest coral bommie I've ever seen on our poor little windlass. Um, we've managed to dislodge it and now we're going back on track to get out of this pass. So that was exciting. How was that for you, Joe? Far out. anchored off Kappa Island with Nuko Island in the background and it's absolutely stunning in here. It's jolly nice isn't it? More importantly the anchor's in sand. The anchor is in sand, we have double checked it. That's with my cleaner. Unfortunately my angel, I think you might have killed Popeye yesterday. Yeah. You can see what looked like when he smashed the coral. This looked like <laughs> blood spatter from a murder scene. I think it's time for him to go in the rag bag. Unfortunately, we have to lay Popeye to rest. There we go. Olive oil won't be happy. Bye bye Popeye. Don't be sad. <laughs> I'm not having had a coffee yet. I know. Yeah. This, this gentleman has come to collect the uh, fee for us anchoring here. Yeah. So it's 15 Dot bang. Top, bang yeah. For three days? One night, two night, three night, yeah. one day. You go away from area, then come back, put down the anchor, pay. pay again. The fee for anchoring had been the subject of much angst and discussion amongst the cruising community, with many cruisers opposed to it. We, however, felt that it was a very small price to pay for anchoring in such a stunning location and also a little bit of support for the local villagers. beautiful day. We were supposed to be cleaning the boat and we got waylaid this morning by Carol and Dennis coming over for a chat and then it was lunchtime so we had some lunch and then we did a bit of cleaning and then we were summoned over to Forever because um, Peter had made a vegan lemon drizzle cake so oh, we didn't really want to go and have tea and cake but we went. <laughs> and that was the afternoon gone, so we still didn't get any cleaning done. And um, now we're watching another beautiful sunset. Well, I'm watching the sunset. Rob's flying Darren the drone, but it's just glass out in here. All calm in the anchorage. It's just beautiful. So I'm just filling in the log. We're about to move. Uh, going back into the main anchorage it's uh, we've got a couple of days that we want to spend just getting some fuel uh, and doing a little bit of provisioning uh, because we have our friend Sharon arriving in two days Yay! so tomorrow's uh, gonna be um, just a, a day of just getting a few bits and pieces Coming back into Niafu Captain Bobberty is getting the uh, the lines ready at the front of the boat there so we can pick up a flooring. Not quite as pretty as the anchorage we've just been in. It stopped working. <laughs> Not quite as pretty as the anchorage. No, as we've just been in. 
Honestly, you try and do serious video. Just came back into Niafi, picked up a mooring, and we thought we'd treat ourselves to a beer ashore. We're ganut. We're ganut for the night, like. Just getting ready to. It's Friday. Pop in to um, and dump some rubbish off at Refuge Cafe, and then we are going to go to the market and get some fruit and veggies. And then later today, uh, you're going to do a fuel, fuel run. run. Yeah, busy day. Go up to the petrol station. We've been advised not to use the either the tanker or the local petrol station because of um, contaminated fuel is a bit of an issue. Dirty I think. Fuel. Dirty. Dirty. Dirty fuel. So yeah, so that's going to be our Oh, we're picking up our. Well, we'll tell you more about that later. We're picking yes. up some special swag, swag today. Is your grey? Lovely. They're so much better than I expected. That sounds awful. Well, you never know. You know, you can't really yeah, visualise yeah. what they're going to look like. This is what Ellen's been up to. You can't leave her alone for longer than ten. I said to her, go and have a beer, but no, 24 cans later. So we're coming up to get some bread. We've been told that this is the place to be, the floating bread shop. We've been told this is the place to get the best garlic bread. What's your bread called? What's the name of it? Bannock. It's called Bannock. Bannock, that's right. We spoke to your missus this morning. Yes, uh, Bannock is a Scottish, it's a, it was brought over to Canada by the Scots in the fur trade days yeah and the the metis and the indians took it on their own and cool uh it's a they can make it on the spot anytime any flavor so, how much are they uh for the full size one it's 10 pounds how big's a full size one yeah we need one of those fine then so garlic it is then garlic sir garlic and, uh, and, and uh, coarse salt like a pretzel oh yes yeah, please <laughs> bring it on okay just give me a few minutes that's oh, fine it smells fantastic Oh my god, look at it. Oh, 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 it's almost like a, oh, it's almost like deep fried. Oh, what is it? It's very full, you want one here? It's like, like a garlic donut. <laughs> And finally, the lovely Shazza arrived, one of our very best friends from New Zealand. And she didn't arrive empty-handed. So, Sharon's bought some of this. Gordon's pink gin. So we figured we'd make some cocktails. We figured we'd so best try it. Is that gonna send you crazy? So it's the first Just sundown, as, Sharon's first sundown is on the boat, and we're having pink gin and I have to say it's my new I've just had a sip of it it's my new favorite thing in the whole world it's honest to god Sharon was taste testing it at seven o'clock in the morning in the airport but we'll not say anything about her alcoholic habits <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah it is it's phenomenal cheers 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 Rob hi from a cool and cloudy New Zealand we really appreciate you watching if you haven't already then please click on the link below to subscribe uh, also, we'd love to know what you think, so any comments are much appreciated. Uh, you can also follow us Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, the links are below, check them out.